For some business stories, we start from the oil industry where Nigeria's midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority has revealed that Nigeria's average daily consumption of premium motor spirit, otherwise known as petrol, dropped to 52 million liters in July compared to 64.9 million liters recorded at the end of June 2023. The agency added that land-based stock and closing stock less debt stock of petrol was 1.12 billion as at the end of July 2023, while marine stocks, which includes berth and offshore availability, was 521.04 million liters. The land-based day sufficiency was 21.5 days, while marine day sufficiency was put at 10.02 days, and the total day sufficiency cumulatively stood at 31.57 days. As of July 1st, from the nation's PMS stock levels, the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited had 293,380,735 liters in stock. Members of MOMAN, that's Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, had more than 91 million, while Depot and Petroleum Market uh, Association of Nigeria had about 753,825,183 uh, uh, liters. In a bid to align with recommendations set forth by the World Health Organization and global health experts, stakeholders in the health sector from five states of the southeastern region have advocated for 20% tax on sugar uh, sweetened beverages to reduce high sugar consumption by Nigerians. The call was made during the Regional Stakeholders Forum on Sugar Sweetening Beverages, tax organized by Corporate Accounts and Public Participation Africa, in conjunction with the National Sugar Sweetening Beverages Tax Coalition in Enugu State. The forum lamented the rise in cases of overweight and obesity in children, adolescents and adults, type 2 diabetes mellitus, cardiovascular disease, cancer and non-communicable diseases among the citizens due to consumption of high sugar. However, stakeholders sought a review of the 10 Naira excise duty as it falls short of WHO's recommendation and one FG not to allow itself to be blackmailed by profiteers who have no regard for decency of human lives. To the financial space where the Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria has commended President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu for unifying the Naira exchange rate to save the country from financial crisis, President and Chairman of Council, uh, that's uh, Dr. Ken Okpara, made this known at the 2023 Lagos Bankers Night, which focused on exchange rate unification, global implications, organizations, and the country. He said the Institute had always advocated transparency and free market that would allow the interplay of supply and demand. The CIBN president pledges the Institute's continued commitment to making contributions and suggestions relating to what should be done to support the growth of the country. He debunked media reports that the Lagos branch was of the CIBN was not in support of the exchange rate unification, describing it as untrue. The reform, essentially as it relates to unification of the exchange rate. And basically to charge that, of course, there will be pain before the, the world comes in. And we have seen that the effort that Central Bank of Nigeria has initiated is already yielding dividends we can see that the dollar, the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar, and the rate has already started coming down. The central bank has significant strategy around this, and the institute is also alongside the central bank. We talked about the implications on household, on the economy, as well as individuals. All of us are affected in one way or the other. We talk about households. Basically, we found from history in Nigeria that once the Naira loses value exchange-wise, every merchant will mark up the selling price of his or her commodities. Whether that particular item is sourced from offshore or it is produced locally, it's already in our psyche. Quit means whenever Naira loses value, 
it is normal to expect price of commodities to go up. And that, of course, will partly explain the inflation rate we saw for the month of July 2023. The federal government has been urged to clarify the division of functions and jurisdiction with the separation of Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy and the Ministry of Transport. By doing so, conflicts will be avoided. Stakeholders in the maritime industry believe that the country will have substantial expansion opportunities with the newly formed Ministry of Marine and Blue Economy. If Unaya Eze has more. The blue economy sector is regarded as one that has the potential to contribute trillions of naira to the Nigerian economy if properly harnessed and optimized. Has made Nigeria. The former executive secretary of the Nigerian Shippers Council, Mr. Hassan Bello, and the founder of the National Association of Government Approved Freight Forwarders, Mr. Boniface Anebonam, say the government needs to define the functions and jurisdictions of the ministries clearly to prevent bureaucratic snags. As a result, they argue that Nigeria's economy must be diversified to escape heavy dependency on one commodity. We have to define the jurisdiction. We have to define the functions of this ministry. It's a novel thing, so we have to be very careful lest we fall into the pit of first bureaucracy. That is a ter a territorial you know, acquisition. Instead of doing what it's supposed to do, someone will say, no, this is my territory, this is not. And before you realize it, seven months gone down, you are still looking about definition of what this new mystery is it's all about. Taking you back to CRFFN, Council for the Regulation of Freight Forwarding, domiciled in the Transportation Ministry. Now, you have divided the ministry, you have Marine Ministry and Blue, you have the Transportation Ministry. Where is CRFFN now? Do we take CRFFN to marine and blue economy, or do we take CRFFN to transportation? Now, when you mention transportation, what are you really talking about? The clarity you are talking about. In discussing the blue economy's prospects, opportunities, and challenges, it was suggested that government provide proper guidance and advance policies addressing cabotage legislation, port development, ocean governance, marine transport, and other key aspects of the sector. Look at the cabotage law the inherent abuse in the weather clause. Where, where are we? Where are we? The need for powering indigenous operations and the ownership of this. Blue economy is, uh, is defined. So they have got their work cut out for them. What are we going to do with um, the fisheries? What are we going to do with transportation on the water? What is the role of tourism? How will blue economy help in creating jobs, in bringing mega revenue? It was stressed that a clear understanding of Nigeria's exploration of the blue economy concept and its immense benefit is essential as a maritime nation. Ifunanya Eze, TVC News, Lagos. Leaders from five developing nations accounting for nearly half of the world's population are gathered in Johannesburg for the 15th BRICS Summit, with expansion of the emerging market groupings, Africa's economic development war in Ukraine, and relations with the West topping agenda of the summit. South Africa's president and current BRICS chairperson, Cyril Ramposa, is hosting leaders of the group, investors amongst others. This year's edition is the first in-person summit since the COVID-19 pandemic. The Deputy Director General of South Africa's Department of Trade and Industry, Lerato Mataboge, said decisions are expected to be taken on decoupling global trade from the dollar and expansion as a, a growing number of countries are queuing to join the bloc. All right, then, away from that now, technology giant Microsoft has submitted a new deal to buy Activation Blizzard after the original $69 billion bid was rejected by the UK competition watchdog. The Competition and Markets Authority confirmed today that Microsoft's uh, initial offer for the Call of Duty uh, maker had been blocked. It will not review the deal, but this is not uh, a green light. Under the new offer, Microsoft won't buy the rights for Activision uh, existing or new games stored in the cloud. 
The pledge, which will last 15 years, would not cover Activision's PCs and console games in the European economic area. Microsoft uh, deal to buy the Call of Duty a maker struck last year and was set to be the biggest of its kind uh, in gaming industry's history. And wrapping up business now, former Bank of England's governor, Mark Carney, has been named chairman of the new board of directors at the U.S. financial information and media firm, Bloomberg. Bloomberg's head of products, Vlad, uh, Vlad Kitacho, was also appointed chief executive officer in the major shakeup of the company's management. The media firm's founder, Michael Bloomberg, made the announcement in an email to staff. The former BOE boss has previously worked with uh, Mr. Bloomberg on climate-related projects. The reshuffle will see more new board members being appointed in short order, while existing members will be given honorary positions. Mr. Carney is expected to continue in his role as chairman of Canadian investment firm Brookfield Assets Management.